this video, we're going to go over driver etiquette. Driver etiquette is what allows us as RC racers to continue to race without much hindrance, confusion, and general frustration. These are unwritten rules that people should follow but don't always talk about. Now, this might be the closest thing to a rant video I'll ever post. Before you begin, however, this is your reminder to hit the bright red subscribe button if you like my channel and want to see more. Without much further delay, let's begin. First, let's start with the pits. This is something that I'm guilty of doing sometimes, and that's trying to take up as little space as possible. Now, if you go to a track where there are no pits and you bring your own trailer or pit table, you don't have to worry too much about this. However, if you go to one that does have their own pits, please try to avoid taking up too much space. There's nothing worse than having to set up somewhere really inconvenient because someone's using the whole table for themselves. Well, I'm lying, there are things worse than that, but we'll get there. Try to be as organized as possible. Invest in a pit mat to sort of put up a visual of how much space you should be taking up, and trust me, people will be thankful. Now you're all set up and ready to go in the pits, and now it's practice time. Now the worst thing you can possibly do is plant your car on the straight. Yes, on a track like this, it's very convenient to do so, but don't do it. What usually ends up happening is you'll sit your car down on the straight, and some poor soul is going to come down set straight, full speed, and ram right into the back of you. And something is more than likely going to break on both your car and their car. I'm not saying that it's going to happen every time you do put your car down on the straight, what I'm saying is that it's likely to happen eventually, and when it does, it's really going to suck. Speaking of which, if you end up crashing and flipping on a high speed or high traffic part of the track, be sure to call it out to the other drivers on the stand. A simple look out on the back straight or look out right after the kickup will help others to know where to be cautious on the track. Say it loud enough though, so and clear enough so that other people can actually hear you. If you still get hit at the point before you're flipped over, it isn't really your fault anymore. Depending on the track, there will always be a place where everyone puts down their car before they get on the driver's stand. Be sure to use it every time to build up a habit. Most larger tracks have a pit lane where you can put your car down, so be sure to use that as well. After you've run your battery and put it back on the charge, be sure to go out in the track and marshal for the other drivers while they practice. This is especially important on large tracks as it takes a long time to get off the driver's stand and flip your own car. It's generally just a nice thing to do for other drivers, as more than likely other drivers have and will do it again for you. Now you're all ready to go and it's finally race time. What do you do when you get on that driver's stand? Well, contrary to popular belief, you aren't going to be swerving to make sure nobody passes you ever. This kind of bleeds into the practice, but if somebody is faster than you, let me emphasize this, let them pass. In all actuality, there's very little worse than being sideswiped, rammed, brake checked, or in general just held up by someone you're lapping. I know it's a second nature to want to stick to your line, but chances are if someone is all over your taillights and trying to pass, they're gonna do it eventually. The absolute worst case scenario is if you end up taking them out as a result of you not letting them pass, turning into them in the middle of a corner or a straight, or taking a corner way too slow and getting rear-ended. It's kind of like how it is in Le Mans racing where the LMP1 cars are given right of way over GT3 and GT2 cars because they're straight up faster. Again, if someone's faster than you, simply let them pass. Don't try to block them off because you'll end up looking like a douche. Trust me, I know. Now that the race is done, you have one last piece of personal responsibility. Marshalling. Marshals, for those who don't know, are simply the people who go out and flip cars when they roll over or crash into a wall. After a race, you as a racer have an obligation to marshal the next race. Unless you have a physical disability, the first thing you should be doing after you sit your car down at your pit is going out to the track and marshalling for the next race. My general rule for marshalling is marshal the way you'd want to be marshaled. If you flipped over, you wouldn't want the person closest to you to be on their phone or something like that. Always go for the car that crashed first if multiple cars crash near you. Always run, never walk, and never pick up a car by the wheels. The reason for this is people have a tendency to lay on the throttle when they're on their lid. This is fine when you're trying to get the attention of a marshal, but when they see you, please just let off. Nobody wants to grab something that's spinning at 16,000 RPM with their bare hands. I have a few cuts on my hands from people doing this and I can say it isn't fun. One little side note is also when you're marshalling a car to try and flip them back onto an area where they're not going to get run into by another car. That's just another side note. Those are all of the unwritten rules I can think of that people unfortunately tend to shirk from time to time. If you can think of any other unwritten rules that people tend to ignore that I missed, feel free to put them in the comment section below. Also, if you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. We're really close to a 500 subs and I can't thank you enough. I'll see you later.